Hello and welcome to a new Practical Sheets video regarding Google Sheets and Google Apps Script. Today, we're going to see how to know which user is using or editing a, a particular sheet. And more than that, we're going to do a log of the users, but similar to what sheets already have in the version history, but we can do it ourselves and customize it as we want. And we can bring the user, the time when an edit was done, which range did it edit, which sheet did, was edited, what was the value that was changed and all that. And we could know the, the most important thing today is to know which was the user with one important caveat is that this will work perfectly when we have users from our domain, from Google Workspace, from a particular custom domain. But if you're working with external users with gmail.com, this won't work most of the time because you will need permissions and the permissions is a complicated matter. Maybe someone knows how to do it. I don't. And in the Google documentation, they warn you about this and tell you it's difficult to know the username if they are not from your organization. Okay. So what we do here in this video is when it's Gmail, we're going to change the name for anonymous. You could change it for personal email or something like that. Okay. This is what we're going to do. I know you love it, but before we go, you can support me by subscribing to the channel, by giving me a like or, or a comment. Actually, the feedback is the best thing. If not, you could go to the Patreon page where you don't have to hear me talk 15, 20 minutes. You just can download the template and use it immediately. Thank you so much. So let's begin. The first thing I want to do is to see a couple of methods where I can bring the name or the email of the user that currently is editing my sheet. This is the thing I want to know. Then I could put it maybe in a column, use a logger, bring to a sheet. It doesn't matter. The important thing is see if we can at least see it in our Google Apps Script and then we can put it anywhere you want. Okay. So let's go to extension subscript. Let's call this user, bring user. The first method we're going to see is a simple trigger called on edit that you may be familiar with. Okay. You need to call this function like this on edit. And what we're going to do on an edit for this first verification is to use this logger log. And we're going to try to use something that brings me the name of the editor. In this case, we're going to use this E. These are events that the on edit trigger has that brings me information about the sheet, about the user and more. If we go to our documentation in Google Workspace in automation triggers and we go to event objects, if you look for edit, you'll see a lot of things that are very useful, especially the range, the source, the old value and the value. Today, we're going to use this user. So I want to see what does the user bring. So I'm going to say E dot user. Very, very simple. Let's save. Let's edit anything in our code. Do anything. Let's go to executions. And here I have my email. Now I'm going to share this with another user. Send. And let's open it with that account. So now here I'm going to change something. And I go to my code again, click on this one, refresh several times. And here it is my other user. Okay. So now I can separate who is the user that is doing the, the edits. You would say this is perfect. Now this would work excellent. But remember that this is a Google workspace account. So this. I have the permits of my user because we are all of the same organization. But if I share this with another person, first it warns me that be careful when you share with other people, let's say share anyway, I'm going to open this here. I have it in Spanish, but it doesn't matter. Here it is. Now let's try to do some changes here. 
and let's go back so you would say perfect now let's see let's go here and i don't have anything okay so this is the big warning sign that maybe you have just lost five minutes of your time but it's very important to know that when people are not from your domain this is not feasible it's very difficult because you would have to ask permission to every, to every user so this works really well when you're using workspace when everyone is in the same domain or in the same workspace account but if you are working with an external person with a gmail account it will bring empty maybe what you could do if it brings empty you say external user and that's it so again this won't work for every case if you what you wanted to do was that any customer independent of their email you could track what they're doing it's not that easy because of the permit but given that in the workspace account you are controlling all, all, all of them in quotation marks then you can have the usernames maybe even there's a, some permissions in the administration panel that you can not allow this to happen so maybe in your case if you are trying this and say it doesn't work maybe you have some restrictions in the admin panel and you will have to talk to your administrator to see how you solve this okay this is very important to take into account before you plan on uh, rolling this to any of your projects it has to be under the same domain or workspace account to work perfectly now that we know that we could bring some uses but first i'm going to show you another method and the other method is we're going to do logger log again and we're going to use a service that is called session session dot we can say here get active user we're going to use parentheses and then of the get active user we're going to use the get email method that's it let's save and let's do it again with our three users first this one let's go to the logs did i save perfect now this one here it is let's update here it is and then the third one this one let's do something here it is Let's refresh and it's the same empty so both ways work well it's good to know both because maybe in a particular situation one of them doesn't work then you can try with the other one okay i don't know really what is the difference the big difference is for example i don't like that much using this e this event it's not but it's a personal preference i don't like to use it that much because it blinds google sheets a bit on the suggestions they do and all that so i prefer to use this one i prefer to use the session one but let's leave both of them okay now that we have this we could do whatever you want we could for example log do a logger of the edits that someone is doing so let's say let's create a sheet here and we're going to call it log and we're going to put user time Maybe you could put edit, what sheet did it edit, what cell, what value did it change. But for now, user and time is more than enough. So it's not difficult. We just do spreadsheet up dot get active spreadsheet. We're going to get this sheet we just created with get sheet by name. Lock. Let's call this or let's store this in a variable called log ss this is my log spread log spreadsheet and in my log spreadsheet i'm going to append a row with the user so instead of logging it i'm going to store it in a variable called user and the time that will be time and it will be new date that's it and i'm going to append the row with two items first the user and then the time and that's it let's save and let's try it a couple of times i'm going to do something here do something here do something here and in my log then i should have all the edits i've done and the other one can do something here and something here and something here and something here and again now i have with the other user now let's do what happens when i do it with the anonymous user so we could say that if 
user if user is empty then in user you could put a variable such as anonymous or personal email or something like that let's save and let's try this from here let's see if it works and it works okay so it's a way of doing it again we could put for example in which it did the edits happened uh, in which reference let's try to do it so for this i would need another method spreadsheet up i will say get active range and from here i could get the da1 notation so this will be which reference or which cell did i edit it range here i could put range and in my log range edited and also the the sheet that i edited so let sheet name be again this spreadsheet up get active range dot get sheet to get my sheet but i need the name so dot get name and here i will put my sheet name and you could put a lot of other things if you want the value whatever so sheet edit so funnily enough here i just edited the d1 in the sheet log and if i change something like this you could see that i myself edited again this but maybe this other user edited in my log tried to edit here something and i can have it all of the all of that here just like a, a your own a history that google sheet has has its own but you could do it still here you could use the get value for example to know the value that was put on or if you use the e you could use this e dot old value to put the old thing that changed for example you could say here e and we could put here the old value e dot old value that would be the the old value the value that was changed and e dot value it is the new value that was put on so here i could say old value and here new value so it's a very nice way of seeing the changes actually here let's see for example i'm going to change this er 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 for three four three four three four and i can see that i change it here and let's go to my spanish user my gmail user and again i'm going to change this fg fg with hello and here i can see that the anonymous user changed at this time in the sheet one j11 it changed fg fg for hello okay so this is the type of things we could do with this user with this session actually the topic was the user but we did a nice log of our edits here okay so i hope you liked it and if you liked it you could subscribe to the channel give me a like or a comment better yet or you could go to the patreon page and download this sheet if you don't want to to write the code actually today was a very simple code but you could download and you could download more than 70 templates i have there okay see you next time thank you so much